Achtung, give me meine Dorgen, Dr. Moel. Ooh, am I spouting some racist Nazi ideology there? Or am I talking a little bit about the book Blitzed by Norman Ola with the subtitle Drugs in Nazi Germany? Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's a kind of fun book. Where did I find this? Well, most of my recommendations of drug-related books I actually have gotten from Joe Rogan, I believe. So uh, he has talked a little bit about how drugs were used in Nazi Germany on his show. I have previously read a couple of books of, of the Nazi Germany of the war, World War II and seen documentaries and stuff. So I thought, yep, I'll, I'll give this a read and, and see uh, how much of this is true, how much of this is maybe a little bit of conjecture. This book was published in 2015 and the the novelist Norman Ola, well, he was a novelist, sort of turned semi-historian for the research in this book and then presented it back in more of a novel form. He argues in it that drug use, particularly methamphetamines, uh, but also cocaine was absolutely rampant in the German military and also in the high command in the highest of command amongst Hitler himself. I guess the book is, interprets historical events through the lens of observing addicts. So it goes from, I, I suppose, a little bit about Germany and just how it's a, a manufacturing powerhouse of, of um, opiates and uh, not of opiates, of opioids. We'll get into that difference soon. But also a little bit about why it was so strong, the, the drug use in Germany following from the the depression and the recession in uh, before World War II, and then leading up to it, why it was I uh, just getting in, introduced more and more into the army, and then more and more amongst uh, personal use by by Adolf Hitler himself. So a couple of little fun facts here is uh, in 1941 that was when Hitler tried his first opiate. Uh, in 1943 was when he started taking the opiate uh, Yukido or yeah. Icadol, something like that. And uh, being a, administered by his personal doctor, Theodore Morel. And so a lot of the book is centered around the relationship between Hitler's personal doctor, Theodore Morel, and then Hitler's actual use of, of, of these opiates and his, I guess, gradual decline towards the end of his life. So what are the themes of the book? Well, meth, one hell of a drug. <laughs> it's uh, I suppose it's fascinating to see the evolution of perception and compare that to current opio opioid use. So the main ones in this book were um, Pervitin and what I just mentioned before, I think it's called Icadel. And they were essentially what is the equivalent now of oxycodone, the, the Icadol, and the other one was, yeah, just a pure sort of methamphetamine, stronger than heroin. Um, and yeah, there's there's all sorts of stuff nowadays like codeine, fentanyl, methadone, oxycodone, heroin. It, it's like it goes on and on. Uh, but this was back in the days where they were really just creating it for the first time. So you could sort of see that there there wasn't this, I guess, knowledge of, of just how bad the after effects could be from, from the drug use, let alone just once, but then over extended period of time where someone might be becoming addicted to it. It was uh, really, really apparent in the Battle of France of just how bad this was. So the Battle of France, for those who don't know, was when Germany invaded France in the Blitzkrieg and leading up to the evacuation at Dunkirk, where they, um, there was that big movie on that pretty recently. So 10th of May, 1940. And for this battle, the, the German, I guess one of the German, top German doctors for preparation of, of the men to get the most out of the men in terms of like physical resources of, of an individual soldier, uh, ordered 35 million tablets and of, of this thing called pervitin, which was essentially a, a methamphetamine tablet. Now, with a little bit of research, I think it was saying there was around 3 million men who participated in this on the German side. So that's roughly, you know, 10, 11 um, tablets per, per man in this just one sort of campaign. And obviously if you continue that on, you'd say, okay, that's that's uh, pretty rampant among the German military. It's kind of hard to tell because this book makes it very it seem like it was just rampant. It was just all the time people, would, all the soldiers were on meth, which is, I guess, not not super true because you can't have meth addicts, everyone being a meth addict, but 
it also explains a lot about how the German military was able to operate and do these blitzkriegs where they would go three, four days without sleep and just keep going and going and going. The difference as well between opioids and opiates is, uh, is opiates are natural ones. So they come from the poppy seeds and things like that, whereas opioids are synthetic ones. And so there was actually a real strong industry for the synthetic manufacturing in Germany. They produced so, so much of the of the drugs, which would then actually spread out to the rest of the world. They, they're very, very efficient with their practices and they were just an industrial powerhouse. And, um, you know, I think they still are today in terms of producing stuff. I believe some of the even COVID vaccines are coming from Germany and whatnot. So the other main theme of the book, I would say, is interpreting history, the unwinnable battle. If you've ever read a history book or seen comments on, on books about history, it's a subject that will always stir up controversy. And I guess if you're talking about Nazi Germany, just amplify, amplify that by, you know, 100 and because it is so subjective, there is, there is this real tough battle to find the balance between facts, conjecture, and then entertainment. In this book, I think he does a pretty good job, although maybe slightly leaning a bit more towards the entertainment side, especially when he's you know, creating these vivid descriptions of the Dr. Morel giving the injections to Hitler in his private bunker and sort of what's happening after it, the immediate perk up of, of, of Hitler and all these things, you know, he's, he's sort of adding sur surplus details to, to what you can't actually know. Like maybe he was getting the injections and then he'd get real sleepy for 10 minutes and then perk up. Who knows? He does add that entertainment aspect, which does draw a little bit away from the history, but I think he did a, a pretty good job personally. The, the other one, I guess is, one of the reasons I, I, I saw, I found this book quite interesting was the, the questions that you can then ask from it, such as diminished responsibility. We, we all can acknowledge if someone is taking drugs, they're not in their right mind. They're, they're acting differently than they would if they didn't have drugs in their system. So does that diminish the responsibility of what happens from Nazi Germany and the decisions they were making? I would say obviously yes. Yes, there is diminished responsibility, but not much. So who cares? The you know some of the critics of the book were saying, "Oh, this is a real dangerous book because um, you know it's 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 sort of justifying what the Nazis did." And even in his own book, Norman Ola says, "No, I I don't think the this affected any of the decision making of the high command of Hitler and, and all that stuff." And I was like, "Bullshit! They're they're on meth. Obviously, they're going to be making different decisions." But I don't think that excuses them. It's, it's sort of like, uh, you know, a, a driver who's drunk driving kills someone. Yes, they were under the influence and they were making decisions. Their reaction times were slower, all these different things. They were making poorer decisions. Yet you still go to jail if you do that. So, you know, I think we've already firmly established that just because someone is on drugs and they're in an altered state doesn't really, it diminishes responsibility like only slightly. Uh, my own personal observations from the book, uh, I think there's a, there's a r real big difference between sort of learning a language and a culture and then deeply knowing it. And one of the reasons this book was so popular was because this sort of narrative hadn't really been formed before and of, of just how much drugs were actually, and methamphetamines in particular, were being used by Hitler himself and then just the Germans as a whole. And he found this by going through the personal notes of the, of the doctor, uh, of Hitler's doctor, Theodore Morel. And initially when these documents were captured, that there was a word written, which was Yukadal or Eichadal, but it'd been mistranslated by um, Americans who were, who had grabbed these notes and thought it said Eichadal or Inkadal, or, you know, they missed one letter not realizing like, holy shit, there's a methamphetamine that Hitler's taking day in, day out. Whereas uh, as someone who was aware of that time, who knows German a bit more, who could decipher it was like, oh, I sort of understand this. Now there is still a little bit of conjecture because the it's not like the doctor's notes were saying, yes, I'm giving methamphetamine to Hitler on this day, this day, this day. He sort of had to hide in his own notes what he was doing because Hitler did have this whole 
per like a ideology of uh, clean eating, vegan, um, not vegetarian, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, doesn't do all these things. And so they needed to maintain this sort of illusion, um, even though he was receiving, yes, methamphetamines and also animal byproducts in the form of like liver and, and stuff injections going in. So yeah, hypocrisy rampant <laughs> throughout as well. One can also get easily lost in the world of history. It's a, it's a fascinating subject diving into it and it almost makes you want to go back to those times and really see it. And, you know, that's, I guess, the point of it. You're trying to feel what it was like in those times, the the atmosphere, what what influenced people's decisions and things like that. It's really, really fascinating. So my summary of the book, it's a, to quote in German, super, a super book with obviously much, much research. He's uh, plenty of times in it you, you read, you know, whole passages that have been translated from German into English, from actual quotes from people, from actual snapshots of, you know, Hitler's um, uh, doctor's notes or notes from the high German command about how they want to introduce uh, a new type of drug into the, the Navy and things like that. Lots and lots of research. It's slightly sensational, but I think for the most part, he paints a, a fair picture of what was going on in the time and it's almost revelatory because I hadn't really considered that aspect of, of the sort of German, not only the, the German country army as a whole and how much methamphetamines they were taking, how much they were in an altered sort of state and then also Hitler himself. So I think it adds a, a whole nother perspective yeah, about the Wehrmacht, the, the, the war machine, the, the military, and also about Hitler himself. So I'm giving the book Blitzed by Norman Ola a 7 out of 10. Um, another recommendation for me is I think reading a little bit about history first can give you, a, a, and more of the dry stuff can give you a better perspective on this because I was already well aware of the the historical operations, the the way Hitler used to move from this place to this place, how he used to live, what influences were, were going on when they decided to invade Russia and how that sort of battle of Stalingrad and the battle of Moscow ended and the retreat and all that, all that huge amount of stuff made it this easier to focus on what the book was really about, which was the drugs. Um, also what a title blitzed man absolutely nailed it so yeah, something pragmatic to that i want to take from this book uh i want to try meth no, no that's not true uh i want to i suppose introduce some more history books into into my repertoire i it's been a long time since i have read some real historical you know nitty-gritty facts and this is what happened on this date with maps and pictures and stuff you know it can get a bit boring but i think learning more about those makes me appreciate books like this even more because I have that historical understanding of of what actually physically happened, like real events. And then this way I can sort of sift through the lines between a little bit of what is conjecture from the author, what's really provable and what is, yeah, you know, probably not true. So uh, yeah, really fun book to read. I'd highly recommend it if you are intrigued about history particularly about the the sort of nazi regime or meth if you just really like meth this is a book <laughs> for you uh, other than that i hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world and uh, yeah i'm gonna leave it there current out